Hi, Henny, how are you? It's Technicolor. I have another speed build for you, and this one was a really fun one for me because it was my very first recreation center build. I think that Brindleton Bay is a beautiful world, but it was desperately needing a recreation center, and so was my legacy save, so I built one. <laughs> I know that I've been posting a ton of The Sims 4 content on this channel, but I also do a ton of simming over on my Twitch channel. I live stream pretty much every single day, except for Wednesdays and Sundays, and Tuesdays and Thursdays are when I do The Sims. I have been playing through this legacy challenge that I wrote with my boyfriend, the Around the World Legacy Challenge. While I have a ton of packs, I really haven't played with a lot of the gameplay features of each pack. So I don't really know a ton about the different gameplay features that have come with each pack. I feel like I'm pretty familiar with a couple of them, but that's only because I used them in my very first Legacy Challenge, which if you didn't know, I'm a huge The Little Mermaid fan. So in order to sort of learn how to play The Sims 4, I quickly created a legacy challenge for myself where I would just play through Princess Ariel's whole life. And I did that and I became obsessed. And then I wanted to continue playing a legacy challenge, but I didn't know what to do. My boyfriend had actually suggested, well, we have all of these packs. Why don't we try to come up with an idea where the focus of each generation has to deal with that pack? So the very first generation was growing together in parenthood, kind of a blend of that, where it was kind of like kickstarting the whole family idea. My founder really wanted to have like that lasting legacy, have a really loving family. And then the second generation dealt with Discovery University. The third generation dealt with cottage living and gardening. And now the current generation is cats and dogs. My generation four sim, Luella, is a musician and her husband is a professional athlete. And what's very exciting about that is this build is specifically for them because I wanted a place where I could maybe make some extra simoleons by having Luella perform, but also have Gage, her husband, be able to get his fitness skill up and mentor other Sims. So that's kind of the whole reason why I built this recreation center. But in general, I feel like Brindleton Bay needed a recreation center. And I didn't know the things that were required. We needed a jungle gym. So I have the pirate ship jungle gym. I know it's not a requirement for this, but because the whole first floor is also a performance space, I also thought that there should have been a bar. So I created a cute little bar space. You will have to hire a sim to actually man that space. If your sim wants to learn mixology and tend the bar here, they can totally do that as well. So I added in a piano and a violin and I believe a guitar, but I think that might have been a last minute addition and also a microphone. So hopefully this is a beautiful space for Luella Wyndham or any of your Sims to perform. Upstairs is also the fitness center. So I have a bunch of treadmills. I have some workout machines. There's a place to sort of sit and relax. And of course the bathrooms with shower. But I wanted this to look as if it was a converted house. So I built a Cape Cod style house, which is very similar to Luella and Gage's own home, which is literally just across the street and a door down. But I wanted something that looked as if it would fit the neighborhood and it was like converted. So maybe it was originally a house, but now it's a recreation center. So that's kind of the whole vibe that I was going for. And I think most of that fits with the exterior, but I didn't necessarily stick with that for the interior. Because even though it's like kind of a big house, I feel like on the inside it was fairly small. But because there is the wraparound porch and there's a ton of windows everywhere, I knew that I wanted it to be bright and airy. But I also knew that I didn't want it to be as closed off or like closed floor plan that I normally love. But I decided to make it all pretty open, which is kind of unlike me. If you're unfamiliar with my builds, I hate open floor plans, like absolutely despise them. 
My boyfriend and I, when we go to buy a house at whatever point in the future, we are probably going to struggle because I'm not going to want any open floor plan. I can't stand that. I want there to be separate spaces for everything. And I tend to do that a lot in my Sims builds as well. <laughs> um, I actually haven't done a ton of community style lots. So I've been doing a couple more recently. And this was very exciting to build because I knew that I wanted it to be converted. I knew that I wanted it to look like an actual house, but then the inside was going to be completely different. And that actually posed a bigger challenge than I was expecting. I found that I wasn't really sure what I wanted the house to look like because I didn't want it to look like a carbon copy of Luella's house, even though it does have a lot of similarities. But I also knew that I wanted it to be a bit more business-like, if that makes sense. I feel like I've definitely gone to places where maybe it's a dentist's office or it's a doctor's office or something that is now a business, but it's in a converted home. And I really wanted to embrace that style. And I, I kind of feel like I did a pretty good job. And if I'm being honest, I felt like it wasn't really all coming together until I did the landscaping. But once the landscaping was done, I was like, this is exactly what I wanted it to turn into. The only thing that drives me nuts about this lot is <laughs> the staircases. I built these very intricate stairs, which I ended up having to cut out a lot of it because it took a very long time for me to figure it out. And then I did figure it out, but it wasn't functional. So your Sims couldn't actually get to the upper floor. So when I came here, I needed my Sims to like check everything. So <laughs> I had to teleport them to to the to the fitness level. And then I had to teleport them back down. It it was a little bit of a struggle, if I'm being honest. And I was very upset because I felt like I put all this work into it and then the staircases didn't even work. But I got the staircases to work. I just needed to pull the platform out a little bit longer, but because the platform is diagonal in places, it actually sticks out from the side of the house. And I don't understand why The Sims makes it look like that because it actually has like this weird, like you could see the platform and it sticks out of the house. And I don't really understand why. I don't know why it doesn't fit within the confines of the room, but whatever. I also struggled for a fair amount of time with the floor plan for the fitness space because the first level was going to be much easier. It was going to have just kind of this open air place where you could go out onto the porch, but you could also enjoy the music. There were some places where you can sit outside. I knew that I wanted specific things to happen on the first floor. And then the second floor is where I knew I was going to put the bathrooms and also all of the fitness equipment. But I kind of misunderestimated how much space the fitness equipment was actually going to take up. And I knew that I wanted there to be space for your Sims to mentor or get mentored. And I wasn't entirely sure how much space was needed for that. So it's a little bit more open upstairs and it took me forever to figure out where to put the bathrooms. Like you can see that I struggled with the floor plan for the longest time. And then I finally came up with a solution where, because I didn't want the bathrooms to be gendered. I wanted them to be a space where you could go in and shower or use the toilet in either of them. And I knew that I wanted to. I, I knew that I wanted there to be space because I figured if there's going to be Sims here, I don't want you to have to wait or not be able to use the bathroom or not be able to use the shower because the other Sims who spawned on the lot were using it. And weirdly enough, you only need one sink, one toilet, and one shower for a recreation center. I don't know, I just thought that was strange. Maybe because it's not an actual gym, there won't be as many Sims spawning for that area. I don't know. <laughs> I, I was a little iffy about it. 
I guess I probably didn't need to focus on it that hard because literally Luella Wyndham's household is across the street and like over that little bridge space. I don't know. It probably was not that big of a deal, but I, for some reason, was struggling and not really knowing what I should do or how to fix it. And it took me such a long time to figure out the bathroom situation that I'm kind of embarrassed. Honestly, figuring out that floor plan and figuring out the stairs was the longest part of this build. And that's also probably the most of what I took out. My favorite part of this build though, honestly, has to be the performance area because I knew that I wanted there to be a stage and I knew that I wanted there to be that beautiful big window from the Cats and Dogs expansion pack. I knew that I wanted that in the background and because I had found this beautiful swatch of the curtains that I believe are from Movie Hangout. <laughs> I knew that I wanted that to sort of give that like luxurious air to it. And I'm I'm just thrilled with the way that that space turned out. By the way, if you are returning to the channel or if you've just happened to see any of my The Builder Game submissions, I am very, very excited because the results of this competition come out I believe later today. And by that, I mean the published date on Wednesday. And I unfortunately did not make it to the final round, but I made it to the round right before then. So I made it through five out of the six weeks. And honestly, it was such a phenomenal journey. And I was so excited to even be able to partake in it. And to know that the competition is coming to a close and there's going to be a winner decided soon is just wild. I have made a ton of friends from this competition. I'm so excited to see what they have done and what they'll do in the future and to see who the winner of the Builder Games is. But if you're interested in my journey in the Builder Games, I've actually been blogging about it over on my Ko-fi page. You do have to be a tier two member to view those posts, but it has been a very fun experience to be reliving these submissions. And honestly, having put in the work these past few weeks, I feel like I have progressed so much as a builder. So I am so grateful to the hosts and the judges and my fellow competitors. Competing in season five of the Builder Games was honestly kind of like a blur, <laughs> if I'm being honest. But I am just blown away by the support that I have received from all of the competitors, but also from the hosts, the judges. I feel like it was a very fun experience, but so rewarding. So if you want to hear more about that, you could check it out over on Kofi. I'll link it down below, but I... I'm just so thrilled and I feel like I have become a much better builder because of it. I'd also like to share some personal news if you don't mind. So I sort of feel like these are like the perfect opportunity to have these conversations with y'all here on YouTube. Obviously I kind of like chat for a fair amount before every stream over on Twitch, but I feel like we don't really get that here. And something that is very exciting for me, but was also a kind of nerve wracking experience was I ended up doing a tech after dark stream over on Twitch. And if you're wondering what that is, basically I've kind of always decided that for my content, I wanted to be somebody who is a little bit more PG-13, kind of somebody that anyone could watch. And I didn't really want to be cursing on my streams or anything like that. Definitely not family friendly, but definitely not like a mature stream or anything like that. And last year I had a special stream to celebrate my anniversary on Twitch. I had been streaming for three years at that point and chat had unlocked a future stream, which just happened to be this past weekend where I would be completely unfiltered, maybe like drinking on stream, cursing, all of that, <laughs> that they probably wanted me to do or to see me do a lot in the past. And I was so nervous for it because I feel like that's not very representative of my content. I definitely curse way too much in real life, like off camera, but I, I just didn't really want that for my content. 
But I have to say, it was pretty funny to finally let loose on stream. And I feel like everyone enjoyed it. I feel like it was like a very fun time. It's not something that we'll do all the time or I don't even know if we'll do it again, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> but honestly, it was so funny. We ended up playing a game that I've thoroughly enjoyed over the years, which was actually an unlock way back in the day where I had had a bunch of friends who were playing Dead by Daylight, which is a sort of horror based survival game. And I, I don't know. I just didn't really understand it. I didn't think it was necessarily my vibe, but it turns out it's kind of one of my favorite games. <laughs> so I actually play it a ton and we ended up playing custom. But instead of it being the typical game where there's four survivors and one deadly killer, we had five of us playing together and we would just rotate who was playing as survivor and who was playing as the killer. And it was just like really funny because we spent most of the time just trying to like scare each other or use perks in different ways to have certain things happen that would benefit the survivors or benefit the killer. And it was just, it was just just a ton of fun to just like kind of goof off with everyone and I don't know I I had a really good time with it I also am very excited because actually on Saturday March 23rd I'm going to be doing a very big stream to celebrate my birthday I do this funny thing where every single year because my favorite number is 23 I just celebrate my 23rd birthday every single year I don't age <laughs> I am well over the age of 23, but I, I don't know. I just think it's funny to celebrate like your 23rd, especially when it's so obvious that like you're not 23. And I, I've just been having a ton of fun doing celebratory streams like that over on Twitch. So it's going to be a big one this year. And I'm actually very excited about the things that I have that chat can unlock. So if you are around on Saturday, March 23rd, it's probably going to be on my actual birthday, March 23rd, and it's probably going to be around noon Eastern time. And by the way, the clocks have changed and it has completely thrown me off. I feel like I don't have any sense of time anymore, especially because of the pandemic. I just feel like my view of time has just been completely skewed, but I don't know. We could be going for 12 hours and we could end at midnight. Actually, every single time that I've done a stream like this where you could unlock extra hours, we've always ended up going till midnight. So we'll have to see what happens. <laughs> Another thing that was interesting with this build is the fact that the signs were really hard to deal with. I don't know if it's an actual recreation center sign that came with growing together, but I knew that I wanted to use that and I wanted it to kind of be built into the house. And I knew that I wanted it there because I felt like it was going to cover up that weird platform that is just like sticking out of the build for no reason whatsoever. But I knew that I also wanted the cats and dogs sign, the, the like white fence looking thing. And I knew that I wanted to put some of the like label sticker signs on that, but I did not really know how to make it fit in. I knew how to make the growing together sign fit, but the other one, I just felt like it was kind of just like sitting there. And then once I started using the flowers that come with romantic garden stuff, which hopefully you got it when it was free, it ended up that EA actually had it so you could get romantic garden stuff for free. And honestly, game changer, because I feel like a lot of people don't really think of romantic garden stuff, especially with landscaping, even though there's a ton of really nice landscaping in there. I feel like there's so many people who are just like, eh, it's just romantic garden stuff. They're like, it's not that big of a deal, but it's one of my favorites. And I actually bought it myself well before it was free because I, I really liked it. I thought that there's a lot of build items in there that you probably won't use in everyday builds, but the flowers I use in pretty much every single build. I love them. And actually I would love to have them like in my own garden. Obviously, I live in a New York City apartment right now, so that's not going to happen. But at some point, I would like to get a house with my boyfriend and the delphinium flowers that I've become obsessed with from the romantic garden stuff. I would love to have them in an actual garden. The only thing is, I also want a dog and apparently they're super poisonous. I think they're also poisonous to humans, which is kind of crazy. 
I also found out that that tree that has all the lanterns coming from it is from Romantic Garden stuff. I'm almost positive. If I'm wrong, don't yell at me in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm pretty sure it was there. I remember building and trying to figure out what I could do for lighting. And then I noticed that tree had them. And I was like, wait a minute. Honestly, I'm kind of surprised by some of the packs that I've recently ended up purchasing, like movie hangout stuff. I was not expecting to like a lot of the items in there. And I ended up loving them. One pack that I really want so bad is Spa Day. But every single time I look at it, I think because... The Sims, all of the items that they're showcasing are in like that white swatch. So you don't really get to see what it looks like. It, I mean, it fits in with the whole spa day feel, but I, it just does not look like something that, I don't know, sticks out to me. So every single time that I go to look at it, I'm like, no, I guess I don't really need this. But then I see people use the items and it's never in like the base swatch and I'm like, this is something that I really, really, really want. <laughs> Actually, Spa Day was an item that was used pretty exclusively, or maybe not exclusively, but it was used a lot in the build that I had for Atlantica Castle. If, if, if you remember earlier in the video, I was talking about how I had done a The Little Mermaid Legacy Challenge over on my Twitch channel. And the house that I had for Atlantica Castle it was beautiful, but one of the packs that was used a fair amount was Spa Day. So some of the items just like didn't show up, obviously, when I loaded it into my game. And at that point, I had Island Living get together and maybe that's it. <laughs> so I would love to play with that household again and just see how different it would look because I fell in love with it playing the way that I had. But to see what Atlantica Castle had looked like based on the builder who had made it, I would love to see it. I believe the builder that had made Atlantica Castle for it was Rivendell Star. And I know that they have done so many amazing builds, but this was when I was very new to The Sims and I really didn't know anything. Um, actually, at some point in that legacy challenge, I ended up needing Prince Eric's castle and I was going to find another one on the gallery, but my boyfriend, who's an actual architect, he asked if he could come up with something for it for me. Y'all. <laughs> I think to this day, that build is probably my most favorited, most downloaded on my gallery because he built it on my computer because I have all the packs, or not all of the packs, but I have like way more than he does. He basically just has base game and then also whatever packs have come free. <laughs> and he legitimately built an amazing castle. He's also an amazing base game builder. I had done a shell challenge. You can also see that in this playlist of The Sims. He had actually tackled this shell challenge that my mods, of which he has won, he kind of organized this whole thing, where my mods would make a puzzle shell for me and it was the hardest most like excruciating shell challenge that any of us had ever done because none of the puzzle pieces really like fit into each other. I ended up making something that I was really happy with, but his was incredible because it was all base game. I think he might've used like my first pet stuff because that was free. And I don't know if romantic garden stuff was free at the time that he built it, but he really didn't use anything. Like he didn't use anything that you had to pay for. So it was kind of, crazy to see that that's all he did and he came up with something that was incredible speaking of disney is anyone else obsessed with disney larkana it's a trading card game if you didn't know and i i don't know i've never been like a trading card game person growing up i had pokemon cards actually if you can see in this bookcase behind me i have a binder of Pokemon cards. And some of them are in Italian because I had family members who went to Italy and got me Pokemon cards and they're in Italian. It's kind of cool. <laughs> but I did not really know that it was a game. <laughs> you probably like, tech, what? I thought you just collected these pretty cards. <laughs> I didn't know that it was like an actual game. And 
I think that that was the last thing that I ever collected. But one of my favorite streamers had actually shown me that he was collecting Lore Kahana cards. And he showed me that there was a Little Mermaid card. And I was like, okay, well now I'm sold. I ended up talking about it with my boyfriend and we kind of felt like we would be interested in playing it. So we figured let's check it out a little bit. We'll get like starter decks and we'll just see what it's like. And we're obsessed. And now I have also made some of my Twitch chat obsessed. And we've opened a couple of like booster packs and like starter decks on stream. But if you're interested, I'm definitely going to be opening a few things on my birthday stream, which is going to be March 23rd. Sorry, I had to step away to go get them because I'm so excited. <laughs> we actually bought this, but one of my community members and good friends had actually gifted me this, which has 24 booster packs in it. So we're going to be opening this on my birthday stream. So if you want to stop by, if you're into Disney, if you're into Disney Lorcana, there's going to be something for everyone there. We're also going to be playing a ton of The Sims 4. So if you're from my Twitch chat and I haven't mentioned this on stream, you definitely didn't hear this from me. <laughs> <laughs> but I have a few things planned that are definitely going to be within the realm of The Sims, we'll say. So I think there's going to be something for everyone. We'll probably also be playing some community games. Maybe we'll do some Dead by Daylight. Maybe we'll do some Fall Guys. Who knows? But I, I'm so excited for it. I feel like it's going to be a very, very fun stream this year. So if you're around, I'd love to see you there. We also do a ton of The Sims content. Again, I stream The Sims pretty much Tuesday and Thursday mornings. If you're on the East Coast, like I am, it's around 10 a.m. Eastern. And I usually go for about four hours and it is very fun playing with my legacy family. Sometimes we also build on stream, but I think we are probably nearing the end of this speed build. So why don't I jump into the game and I can give you a little bit of a tour. So here we are at the Brindleton Bay Recreation Center and you can see this is the outside with this beautiful wraparound porch and then the back space has this area for the jungle gym and down here you can see that there are a bunch of tables for chess but also there's areas where you can enjoy the performance space when you come in the front doors you are basically greeted with this whole entertainment space there's a bar here there's also apparently a drink where when my sims were here this was left here i guess but there is the performance space which i think turned out beautifully i love having this window in the back but also there is the staircases to go upstairs and once you enter there is this whole fitness space and two bathrooms and then in this little area there's lockers and there's just like a little seating area. I really enjoyed building this one and I hope you enjoyed this speed build. Again if you'd like to see more Sims content like this be sure to like and subscribe but if you'd like to see live content like this again I stream pretty much every single day over on Twitch and I'll drop my link down below. Thank you for watching I will see you in the next video or maybe in my Twitch chat. Bye bye.